Hi, my name is Marinoel Worm. I'm an artist, illustrator, also top teacher on Skillshare, and I also have my own Patreon where I do live drawing sessions and sketchbook tours and all those other fun things. So why are we here today is because we are doing a live drawing session in collaboration with Beth, Beth Spencer from the Introvert Drawing Club. Um, if you're interested in joining that, it is going to be on Saturday, the 4th of November, 1 to 2.30 p.m. Central European time. This is accessible, of course, to her uh, Substack subscribers as well as my Patreon members. Um, and I'm very excited about this session because it's going. the theme is going to be Forest of Quiet Magic. And I've gathered a bunch of references um, for you that we're going to be having fun with. But before that, I kind of wanted to prep this video so that you could start warming up creatively. And I want to give you a few little tools in your toolkit so that you can bring them along with you in the session to feel a little bit more free, feel a little bit more um, creative, and really enjoy working from these references in a way that works for you. So. Without further ado, let's dive in. I'm going to gather all my art materials. If you want to pause the video, gather yours, gather your sketchbook. Now's the time to do that. And I'll see you on the other side. So I've gathered a bunch of different art materials here. I have um, some acrylic gouache. I also have some um, gouache in pans this was something that i got from um, a store called choosing keeping um and i just find it very useful because you can just you know dip your colors in without having to squeeze it from a tube though i do have the tube versions i have you know some pencils oh i have some colored pencils that i forgot to get out but i'm going to grab those and i also have um a few alcohol markers, um, which I've been using a little bit more often in recent months, just every once in a while. And it's funny because it's a sort of material that I had not touched in many years, but I've been really enjoying it kind of as a base as well. Um, I also have some Neo color, but really there's no obligation here in terms of materials. It's really what works best for you, what inspires you the most today. That, of course, is always the most important, is what is it that is really calling to you? And if there's nothing calling to you, then that means everything goes, or anything goes. So that's also awesome. All right, I'm going to just grab my colored pencils, and we'll get started. All right, so for this first little exercise, what I'd like you to do is to grab any art material. It can be the thing that's closest to you. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and we're actually just going to scribble. <laughs> which you know the thing is if you know kind of my classes or my approaches to creativity you'll know that I believe that scribbling and doodling are some of the most beautiful gifts that we can allow ourselves to play with as artists as creatives because it really goes against this notion of perfection of drawings needing to look beautiful and it really connects us back to what the essence, I believe, of creativity is, which is sensation, presence, and play. So you can, of course, scribble with very fast lines like I just did. But you can also, you know, decide to doodle a little bit more slowly. You can experiment with different speeds and different ways of holding your pen. I like to sometimes hold my pens or pencils a little bit higher than I than you usually would. And what that does is that brings in a little bit more chaos, a little bit more unpredictability, and can be also very freeing. And then you can also inversely really work with something very precise and controlled. There's all these ranges of marks that we can make. 
and practicing the expansiveness of our range is what allows us to make choices that really correspond to what it is that we'd like to do. But if you don't know what that entire range is, then you're already limiting yourself. And so that's why I really invite you to kind of try to expand from what you're used to. If you're used to making very precise drawings, maybe practice being more chaotic and loose and scribbly. If you're someone who does very chaotic, loose and scribbly things um, with marks that are very vibrant and energetic, perhaps take a moment to slow those down. You can listen to your tools. You can focus on how it feels on the page and how each tool is slightly different from another. There is no point to this exercise except for the extremely important point of allowing, of allowing whatever emerges, of letting your creativity run free without judgment and just playing with these incredible tools that we have. I am always in awe of the fact that we live in an era where we have such colors at our fingertips for you know many many centuries that was not something that was so easily accessible to most and i don't take that for granted and so why not also just take this moment to celebrate the diversity of colors of textures that we have access to You can overlay different materials to see how they interact, if they interact, how they interact. And I did want to grab a paintbrush. Also include some of that. The type of paintbrush that you use is going to have a big influence on the types of marks that you make. If you have a rounded brush, it'll of course make a much more organic shape than if you're using a square brush, rectangular brush like I'm using right here. But then you can alternate and maybe try, you know, what if you made organic shapes with a square brush? How does that work? And what does that create? Or on the contrary, how do you make more geometrical shapes with a rounder brush? Of course, since I'm using Neocolor, the Neocolor 2 it, sorry, Neo Color Two, not Neo Color One, is water soluble, so that can come along and play in my paint as well. Never be afraid to cover up anything that you've done before. Nothing is precious in our sketchbooks. Nothing is precious. And I think that practicing that mindset, it really allows you to connect with something a little bit more creative, a little bit more free, a little bit more fun, too. All right.
Let's stop there, though. I would say this is the kind of exercise where you could allow yourself to do that for an entire hour. And believe you me, I think you will benefit from it greatly in terms of presence, in terms of personal access to freedom as you're drawing, to quiet the inner critic, and to show the inner critic that we're allowed to do this kind of thing. But anyway, I wanted us to um, get to something a little bit more related to our session on Saturday. So this was really just a way to warm up, allow ourselves to let go a little bit, and we'll move on to our next exercise. So I don't have any references for you today, even though we'll be working from references on Saturday. But I want you to try to maintain some of that freedom that you may have experienced here in the next exercise, in the next little drawings that we're going to be doing. So since what we're going to be doing is very nature themed, forest themed, I'm going to ask you to actually draw forest things, except we're going to be doing it obviously without reference. I realize that that can be really scary, especially if you're not used to not working with reference, but that's exactly why we started off with this. I want to show you that you don't need reference in order to create things that are figurative, even if you've never done that before. So here's one example. I use this sort of like purple neo color over here. What if I took that same sort of shape that I made and I'm going to ask you to look at your page and just pick a shape and just draw it again. So it doesn't need to be exactly like it. It can be inspired by or only vaguely referencing that shape. Yeah, I'm just going to play around with it a little bit. It had something a little bit geometric with some kind of lines, like rectangular. Okay. Now that you've redone one of those shapes that you've explored in the first part of our exercise, what would you do if you had to transform this into a tree? So, you know, the shape that I chose automatically makes me think a little bit more of like a tree canopy, but maybe the shape that you used was more like a trunk or more like a branch. And that could be another, another example. <clears throat> maybe it doesn't look anything like a tree. Maybe it's like some big weird scribble, but how can you, what can you add to it to make it slightly closer to the idea of a tree. I'm going to add a few branches. If you don't like the way it looks, that's absolutely fine. Because again, that's not the point of the exercise. I really just want us to learn to allow our ugly drawings and to allow those to be springboards for ideas. So maybe the one that you currently made you don't really like, but maybe it'll give you an idea of something to try out next. You can also adjust or add to the shape that you already created or the lines that you've already created. I'm going to also try to play around with a little bit of this one. And I want you to remember that realism is really overrated. <laughs> Um, so, you know, our brains will try to sometimes convince us like, oh, it doesn't look realistic enough. And so your drawing sucks, but you know, ask, 
any or sorry rather rather than asking think of any sort of book you may have read like children's book um or even if you've looked at kids drawings and look at the inherent creativity that's there despite it not looking exactly like the thing that you're representing that's the kind of freedom that i want us to start experimenting with and allowing So, for example, usually I would, you know, in a tree, you'd have maybe the re repetition of these, like, little blobs that I did. But what if I decided, well, screw it, my tree has stripes on one side and little dots on the other. Can you allow yourself oh, that level of disconnection from reality? Make them a little bit darker. Okay. I think I'm pretty much done with this one. I don't know how you're doing with yours, but you can of course continue any of the drawings that you've made if you feel like they're not quite finished. Okay. For our second one, why don't we just try to create some sort of, um, I'm going to take up the second half of my page and I'm going to just create a sort of background using any and all materials that I want. You know, you can take inspiration from your initial page or you can just use one single material, but using different directions of your strokes. It's really up to you how you go about creating this, but I would invite a little bit of texture, a little bit of fun, a little bit of scribbling. I really like this green color. It's like very like yellowish green. I'm not sure what color this is. Ooh. That's fun. And why don't I add a little bit of this color, which I can't quite see either. <laughs> it's kind of fun to work with colors. That you, ooh. So overlaying laying paint on my alcohol markers is kind of fun. Creates a fun little texture. All right. So if you allowed yourself to be nice and free, you might have some sort of like kind of, you know, relatively ugly, chaotic uh, <laughs> blob of colors. Um, I, I have no problems with the word ugly. I think, I think there's a lot of beauty in ugliness. So when I say that, I don't mean it in a, in a bad way. I just mean like, okay, it's, little bit chaotic um don't really know what's happening with it um that kind of thing okay so now that we have this sort of strange assortment of different marks and different colors and different textures what are we going to do now i'd like you to take a tool that 
is easily overlayable on this surface. So maybe paint would be a good idea. Um, in my case, I think also maybe my alcohol markers could work as well. But I think I'm going to go for paint. And I'm going to use a thinner brush than this one. Um, so let me just grab that. I have a more round brush here, a synthetic brush, which is what I really like to use when I'm, especially if I'm working with acrylic gouache, um, because, you know, acrylic has like, it dries hard, and so I don't want it to ruin my brushes too much. So why don't I go for maybe a slightly darker color? I have this deep magenta, but I might go... Uh, umber I just want something that I think will work well with these colors um, but also kind of pop out a little I often don't use a palette even though I do have a palette sometimes I do but a lot of times I think it's also fun to just play with colors pure out of the tube um, and in that case, I maybe took too much of it. But what I want you to do is to start trying to imagine in the shapes that you've created, maybe what kind of landscape is in there? Where are the trees in here? Where are the plants? Where are the bushes? And remember, you can even do this even if the shape itself doesn't look quite like a tree. So for example, this orange squiggle doesn't really look like a tree shape to me, but I'm deciding that that's going to be where my tree is. And you can decide... You know, I decided that it was kind of these orange blobs that are my trees, but I could also decide, okay, well, what about this other color? For example, this purple could also be some sort of tree. Or maybe the trunk is a little bit different. Rather than just being a straight line, it's a little bit more angled. This isn't my thinnest brush, so I'm struggling a little bit to create thin lines. But that's all right. I'm just going to lean into that. And then you can take other materials. I have, you know, my colored pencils here. So I might go in and start exploring or expanding this initial idea. Often I think when we, you know, allow ourselves to go messy and then we're like, oh, it's really ugly um, in the bad sense where then that stops us from <laughs> continuing. Um, I think the issue is that often we stop too early, and so we don't allow ourselves to really explore the idea fully, to its fullest end. So that's what I want us to do now, is to really, you know, carve out the shapes maybe a little bit more. Maybe create a little bit more definition. You can expand the shapes that you have or keep them as is. That's also totally possible. You can create outlines. It's really up to you how it is that you expand on your idea. 
But the key is to really allow yourself to inhabit it fully. I really like this purple tree, but the purple I just grabbed is a little bit too dark. And you can keep maybe some of the scribbliness and then you can take some away also by simplifying the shapes a little. Something else that you can do is like maybe add some shadows in different places that feel right to you. You can also have little shadows that anchor your trees a little bit. The key with shadows is kind of to make them consistent enough. So like they're kind of all facing the same direction. So this was a weird shape, but I actually liked the shape. And now I made it too symmetrical again. So I'm going to try to make it asymmetrical. Again. You can also use other materials to make your trunks even clearer. For example, I like that I can make my lines a little bit more thin than with my brush. So I'm actually going to play into that a little bit. But I, for some of them, I'm just going to keep just the trunk. You could also have fun, you know, adding other elements if you wanted, like, let's say, I don't know, I could decide I want a little chair in the middle of my little landscape. But remember that the goal of this is not, I mean, obviously, you know, we're all looking to make drawings that we're proud of and that we think are beautiful, of course. I mean, it's one of the reasons that we do art is because we like beauty and appreciate beauty. And that's also fine as well. But I just want to reiterate that even though that is the thing that maybe brought us into art at first, when we draw, I think it's good to let go of that and really lean into more of the exploration and sometimes you'll be surprised that you'll be able to access beauty in arenas that you least expect. And sometimes it won't work. Sometimes it'll be very ugly the whole way through <laughs> and you won't manage to uh, transform it into something you like. And if that's the case, then I would ask you to celebrate that just as much as your beautiful drawings. And that's where true creativity allows itself to shine, is when you understand that it's in these places where we create horrendous drawings that we can also access the celebration of taking this time for yourself, of exploring of what it says about your capacity for pushing out of your comfort zone and really allowing yourself to explore something that you maybe hadn't explored before. My sky is not very realistic and I think that's very fun. But I am trying to homogenize it a little so that you can see it as a sky 
even with its unnatural colors. But since I'm overlaying different textures, it'll have some of those yummy, uh, yummy textures shining through. Depends on the material, of course, that you use. But even if you use paint, if you use it more transparent, then you'll still gain or keep some of those textures. So I'm getting closer to something that I like, um, but I'm still looking or thinking about how can I make my drawing a little bit clearer. So for example, I'm going to pop some darker color here so that this tree, this purple tree, stands out from the orange tree behind it. So I'm doing that using value, this darker color, this darker value compared to this lighter value. And then if you feel like you darkened it too much, you can always use a different material to lighten up the value that you just darkened. See, that's the fun thing when you mix materials is that there are materials that overlay over others. And so you have more opportunities for uh, course correcting if you're wanting to course correct. And it's funny, I feel like for me, I hadn't thought of it this way, but this almost looks like it could be water. Um, so what if I just added a little bit of blue to that? Let's see, this is a little too dark. I want something very light, actually. Uh, I have this pale lavender. Maybe that could be fun to add in. So you see I'm not even using a brush, um, and that's okay, that's fine, that's fun. And funnily enough, even though I had initially said that I liked the idea of it being a river, I actually prefer it even more as these blobs that I just made. So I'm going to keep these blob, the blobbiness. Just going to leave it like that. The light was a little bit too bright, so I closed my lens a little bit so you can get to see the colors a little bit more. I would say I'm done with this even though um, I could actually, I wouldn't mind continuing it for another, you know, 20 minutes or something. Maybe, maybe carving out the, that green yellow part of the landscape that I haven't really touched this time around. But I'm, I'm happy enough with it as it is. And I also want to, I guess, demonstrate that you don't need to create entirely finished drawings in order to have like a satisfactory drawing session. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it, but I feel like if I worked on it even more, I could get to a place where I like it even more. But in the spirit of allowing, you know, some ugliness, some chaoticness, and allowing that freedom of unfinished drawings or not totally satisfying drawings, I'm going to keep it like this. I hope that your exploration was also illuminating in that sense of allowing yourself to just play with chaos and textures, but also with breaking your assumptions about what things look like. That's really the biggest thing that I wanted us to get at. And it's something that I'd like you to bring into our session on Saturday. Of course, in our session on Saturday, we might be trying to be more um, close to the references because in the reference, there's a diversity of different trees. And so you might want to explore those specific shapes or those specific textures. And at the same time, I want you to keep in mind that even as you're doing that, you can also have other sections that 
break that notion of similarity, that break that notion of fidelity, and that playing with random weird colors and trees that are different, that have different sections to them that don't look the same, that that's also a possibility and something that you can integrate into, into your drawings. So that's it. This is our little exercise to prep for Saturday. Most of all, I just hope that you've managed to, at least in a few little moments, to experience a little bit of the fun, um, of the playfulness that our sketchbook can allow, and to bring that in uh, when we see each other on Saturday. So I hope you enjoyed our little session. I hope you have a few little ideas to work from in our upcoming session. Reminder, it's on Saturday, the 4th of November, from 1 to 2.30 Central European time. And yeah, I can't wait to see you there.